Hi, Stampers. Diane David here with DeeDeeStamps.com, and I am welcoming you into my messy stamp room. I am uh, going to just be checking around, just to check to make sure that everybody is able to see and hear me. Um, if you are on Facebook, go ahead and make a comment. Um, let me know where you're from and that you can see and hear me. That'd be great. I know that I have lots of people on YouTube watching, and I would like it. I know that some of you have already posted, so I'm assuming that you are going to be able to hear and see me also. Um, and I am checking on my Facebook. I just came up, so that's good. And last but not least is my website, Diane or ddstamps.com. Um, if you're on there, go ahead and make a comment in there. Just let me know that you can hear me and see me. Um, I'm hoping everybody is checked out and working. So uh, anyway, welcome to tonight's Stampin' Up! demonstration. I'm excited. I, um, cool. So Jeanette can see and hear me. That's awesome. Kathy asked, when using the woodland embossing folder, why doesn't the ink transfer onto the card very well? Hmm, that's a good question. I'll have to look. Um, and it looks like YouTube can see and hear me good. And hopefully that somebody can see and hear me on my website at uh, ddstamps.com. Nice time to forget that after this many years. I hope everybody had a great holiday. Uh, we celebrated Christmas at my house, and it was a lot of fun. My daughter came home. She's still home, actually, for the holiday, and my son was here with his fiance. Um, so lots of family time. And we had a great New Year's Eve. I didn't. I don't usually go out on New Year's Eve, and I don't usually do much on New Year's Eve, but this year uh, my sister and I decided to be designated drivers for people, and so we just went around the county and see if anybody needed to ride home. Um, and it was kind of fun. We didn't do a lot of rides home because people had already made arrangements, so that's, which I was happy to hear. But we did kind of run into a situation that could have been horrible, but wasn't um, with the help of our local police force. So that was awesome. Um, it's always good when those things turn out better than you think they're going to. Um, anyway, Big news today is the occasions catalog and the celebration started. And if you were anywhere around your computer this morning trying to place an order or any part of Stampin' Up, their whole system crashed this morning, like 12, 15 last night while they were trying to update everything. And it was a massive crash. It was some, it wasn't like too many people on it. It was a, something in their system. Anyway, worldwide went down. Um, things are back up and running and they got it fixed. Our tech guy, they said, had never even seen something like that quite happen. Um, but, you know, it all worked out. Everybody survived. Because like I tell people, you know, it's just stamps, ink, and paper. And so if you have to wait a few minutes before you can get your order or whatnot, it's, it's going to be okay. Um, I am hoping that... Oh, I forgot to check my website. Looks like everybody's going strong. I, I can see lots of people saying hello, and I say hello all, to all of you. I'd love to name each one of you. Um, but hopefully throughout the night as you ask a question, I can name you. I see um, Jean's here from Maryland. And are you planning to do a watercolor class, a watercolor class with the new, or should I say old, watercolor pencils? Um, You know, I actually just... Uh, I had my watercolor pencils for a while. I love them, I will tell you. They're different than what Stampin' Up! had in the past. But if you already have them, use what you have. It's okay. Um, I find that these blend really easily. Yeah, I probably will do, I'm gonna do a little bit of watercoloring tonight. I wouldn't call it a class, but I'm gonna show you several techniques. Um, I'm gonna show you a couple things that I did with them over the weekend. Um, so yeah, I guess this could be the watercolor class. Uh, sorry, I'm making funny faces. So somebody had, well, Kathy had a question about the woodland embossing folder. And she wants to put ink on it. It doesn't transfer ink onto the card very well. Really depends on what you're using for your ink, Kathy. Um, I have used just like our regular designer ink and inked up one side of the embossing folder and then I put it through the big shot. And then wherever the ink is it, it embeds itself into the into the uh, cardstock. I haven't really had a problem 
So anyway, we'll talk about it. Oh, Teresa made it. She lives down the street. Hi, Teresa. Happy New Year. Um, it is somewhat fixed. You can order if you know what you want to order, but if you click on store, you get sorry, still have issues. Really? Because I was just in the store and I was not having issues, but sorry about that. I was thinking of purchasing Telement Toy Photopolymer Stamp Set. It's a French set. Price $25. What punch goes with this set? And is there a bundle price? Thanks. Anita, I'm going to look that up. Because um, I'm going to have to look in the store. So when we get to that part, uh, you may have to remind me, but I did write myself a note. And um, hopefully, we will get that answered for you. So I don't see any more questions on Facebook. And let me just quick check my phone. That's how I have to check my website is through my phone. And then we're going to go ahead and get started. Because I got... Lots of stuff I want to show, and I don't want you guys to just sit here and listen to me blab. Oh, I must have some people on there. Yep, good. Okay, people can hear and see me. I didn't get to the questions on my um, um, website, but I will. I promise that I will. Okay, so to begin, I have to pull up some screens because we have to talk about a few things, and then we'll get right into the... Um, workshop. So as you all know, these are the screens, the beginning screen. This is just a couple of housekeeping tips I want to tell you. Uh, one of them is if you, oh sorry, I always have issues with my slides. Okay, so a couple of things. Down here in the corner where you see this big red arrow pointing to this little check mark and this auto refresh comments, if you have that checked, your comments are going to refresh down below every 90 seconds. And if you're typing in something and asking me a question and all of a sudden that 90 seconds is up, it will refresh and you'll lose everything you put in there. So I would recommend you unchecking that, typing in your question, and then you can always check it off again. But you can also go over it over here and just refresh at any time that you want to. Um, like I said, if this is checked, it, it refreshes every 90 seconds and you might be in the middle of typing something and, and then it will disappear. Also, up here by this gear on YouTube, this little gear right here, if you're having problems with it lagging, sometimes it's either my upload speed or your download speed or whatever our computers are talking to each other. Um, if you click on that little gear, you can make the number higher or lower, which makes the quality of the film. I try to do it in HD. Not necessarily does that happen. It's about 720, I think, when it leaves my house. But if you if you adjust that, um, you may not have that lag time. So those are just a couple of quick, quick uh, housekeeping things, I guess you could call them. I'm going to come back on here. I know that people have questions, and I'd love to answer them. The problem that I have tonight is that uh, it's it's sometimes difficult to keep track of everything. So if I'm looking down or I'm looking like I'm distracted, it's because I'm reading some looking for questions. If I miss your question when you ask it, please ask it again. I don't mind at all. So I did have a question tonight. Just before we got started, Lee sent me a, an email, and she got the fine tip glue, which she loved. And when she stored it away, she put it back in the little plastic bag it came in, and she put it in. She laid it somewhere. And what happened was it plugs up. So when you store your glue, number one, you want to store, you don't have to put it back in the bag if you don't want to, but you just store it standing straight up. Um, you want to make sure on your needle point, see the needle, oh, I guess I better put it up. See that little needle? And this has a little needle on it. That has to slide right down. Sorry, I've got my, there we go. Has to go down inside there, and that's what keeps it from getting plugged. And if it gets plugged, all you need to do is pull this part off, unscrew the black part, I'll set that down, unscrew this part, and then soak this piece. Actually, you can even pull this off. This will unscrew too. And see, like this has glue in it because at one point it was probably laying down. Anyway, what you do is you, you put this and then I just try to run some like warm water or something through it. And you can even soak it for, for not for, you know, even very long. And then just shake it out and then put it all back together and you should be good to go. Sometimes if you don't get that, sorry, 
can't talk and do that at the same time. There. If you don't get that little pin right back in there right away or you let it set, on, sometimes I just set it on my table and it sits there and I forget that I'm gluing and then I forget to put the cover on and it plugs up. But that's the simple fix for it. So, Lee, I did send you an email to let you know that, but I thought, eh, I bet somebody else has that question if you have that question. So, there's my answer to that one. Okay. If you have questions at any time tonight, feel free to ask them, like I said, and if I don't answer, ask again. I'm going to pop up a screen here. Pay it forward. I just wanted to let people know. Um, for those of you who don't know, I do a campaign each, starting in Thanksgiving and, go, and into December, called Pay It Forward. And what I do is um, I take all of my commission and I pay it forward with that money. So any customers that purchase from me in that month and they use a hostess code, goes into the account. And then anybody that either collects orders or has a workshop or places an, their own order of $100 or more, they are then sent an email where they um, nominate a family to pay it forward to. And I was my goal this year was to do eight families, and I will say I was able to help eight families. Um, it was a, a huge success. This was, this was an interesting year. Um, because I had several emails from people. I usually do it anonymously and nobody knows where the money came from. The people that get the money have no idea where it came from. It says it came from Santa. Um, but people got back to me about the story of that person. So when I when I you know when people are drawn and their their name is picked, I have to call the person that nominates them to get their address to send this money to. And I usually hear the stories. But this year it was kind of fun because not only did I hear the story of the beginning but then people emailed me back of the story that they heard once these people got the money and they had no idea where it came from. Um, it is a wonderful thing to do and I thank my customers for allowing me to do that. It's your support throughout the year that allows me to pay that forward. Um, one guy, I just got a call from a gal and a guy that got his single father and he had bought a duplicate gift last year and forgot to bring it back. And so he took that gift and he took it to, I think, a homeless shelter or a homeless person, and it was a gift for a child, and he gave it to that person. And this is a person that probably didn't have enough, I mean, didn't have much of his own anyway. And he said, shortly after doing that, he went to the mailbox and then got that let, the, the money order from Santa, and he was shocked, and his faith in humanity was lifted, and it's those stories that just make it all worthwhile. Um, another little gal I know had a premature baby and eight weeks premature and of course couldn't go to work and she, so she got one of the money orders or the gifts and anyway, lots of stories like that. Another family whose little girl told her grandma that she believed in Santa and that, that really, anyway, it's fun and I thank you. The other thing that I do is those people that participate, they get to send me a wish list and then I use all those hostess benefits to buy product from their wish list to send to them and it was fun to hear back from those people. So those gifts went out. Um, hopefully everybody got them. They didn't get them before Christmas because it didn't get to me before Christmas, but Christmas lasts 12 days, I always say. Um, so, you know, Hanukkah does too. How many days is Hanukkah? Eight, nine? Something like that. So yeah, so they got it during that that time frame. Um, so thank you for helping me pay it forward. Um, it's a it's a great thing, and I love that I can do it. So thank you. Uh, celebration. This is your it's celebration. Um, celebration is awesome. Oh, I got a whole bunch of questions I'm missing. Let's let's go to that. Okay. I missed a whole bunch. Okay, Hawaii, hello, 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 hello. Teresa loves my shirt, thank you. Okay. Teresa, the new embossing folders are so thick. I got the cable one, and how do I best emboss with it? The best thing to do, Teresa, is you only use one plate. So when you put it into your big shot, don't use two plastic plates. Use one plastic plate, and that is wide enough. Then it, then it, it fits through your big shot perfect and embosses. I have found that um, sometimes if you just give your cardstock a spritz with a little bit of water or a little bit of rubbing alcohol, you don't have to. 
but it helps um, kind of soften up the cardstock and it gives a great impression. I love the cable knit one, but yeah, just use one plastic plate. So I hope that answers that question. Obviously it does. Is there an easy way to find out what stamps are retired and what year they are from? Oh, mine are all mixed up. Karen Finkel. Hmm. Sometimes if you Google Stampin' Up! Retirement List, it will come up with all the retirement lists. You could probably even Google Stampin' Up! Retirement List for 1999, 98, you know, anything like that. And you will probably get a PDF or something that will give you a list, Karen. And that's probably the easiest way to do it. Google is your friend. Good joke, Teresa, about the glue. <laughs> What is my favorite celebration product? I'm going to show you tonight. Okay. Can't get you on Facebook. Well, I'm glad that you found me, Sandy, on YouTube. So I think I got those questions answered. Awesome. Okay. Let's see. So celebration, that's where I was. Sorry about that. Celebration is a wonderful time of year. For every $50 in product, you can choose a free stamp set or product. Excuse me. Let me get back to the slide. So for every $50 in product, from, from now until the end of March, you'll be able to choose uh, there's stamps and there's paper, and I think there's even ribbon. Um, free free items and, and that's awesome and then if you decided to you could actually if you became a stampin up demonstrator which is what i am um during celebration you get two extra free stamp sets in your kit so let's say you order your kit is 99 dollars, and for 99 dollars you get 150 dollars worth of product or 125 dollars worth of product that you choose plus two extra stamp sets of your choice on top of that and it's all done with free shipping so if you have any questions I'm gonna put a little button or a little link down there on Facebook so that you can click on that and and if you want to get more information or learn how to join my team or you can always email me and ask me um, so celebration is awesome and there's some great products these are the products that are available as you can see there are stamps and some paper Oh, the metallic ribbon picture didn't show up sorry I didn't notice that um, and this cute little designer card box and a kit, this little card kit down here. So somebody asked what my favorite item was. I'm going to give you a, a couple of favorite items. So my favorite stamp set was the chickens. I just think they're hysterical. And so I have to say the chickens were my favorite stamp set with tasty trucks right behind it. I think it's adorable. My fa other favorite thing was the Carried Away Designer Series paper. And when I show you the cards I made with it, you're going to say, yep, that's pretty darn cute. The other thing I liked was Inside the Lines, the Designer Series paper. I'm going to play with that tonight so you can see it. Um, it's great. And it's great for coloring. And you can color with markers or watercolor pens or whatever with it. But I loved that those products too. So... What do we got here? Oh, bundles. These are, I'm going to just go ahead and switch cameras here and start my demonstration. This was just to show you the, all the various bundles that are in the occasions catalog, um, which started today too. So I'm coming back on screen. Now I have to find my other camera. I should have done this. Sorry. I, I forgot to check this part. I don't know which one of these is. Oh, there it is. Yay! There we go. Okay, so anyway, I'm, I'm going up back to my other camera. So just quickly, I just wanted to show you, these are the two catalogs that are, are good today. If you don't have them, send me an email and I will get them out to you. I did send a bunch out through Stampin' Up! that you would have gotten uh, in December. I sent a bunch out last week. And um, I still have some more here. So if you haven't gotten either the occasions or the celebration catalog, and everybody likes to have a catalog in their hand, um, send me an email and I will get it out to you. But celebration is a great little brochure. It's got lots of great samples. And I just showed you the product, but the samples are absolutely, I think that they're gorgeous. And I actually copied some of these samples right from the catalog to show you tonight, just because they're just so pretty. And, um, 
there's some great things. And then the occasions catalog, which is awesome. Lots of fun stuff in here. I'm going to show, I think I'm showing something in here tonight. I'm sure I am. <laughs> yes, I am. Um, but anyway, there's lots of great stuff in here. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And we are going to start, this is that designer series paper, coloring the, the, in the lines. And we found my watercolor pencils. These are the watercolor pencils, and they actually come in a box that looks like this. With all the colors on the back. But I decided that I would prefer to have them in a case because, I don't know, I just felt like I needed a case. So I'm going to show you a couple things first. Uh, this is just that coloring in the lines. And so what I did is I took a couple of crayons. I'm going to take these two because they're almost the same. I like to take two colors that look similar. I feel like I might use those two for something. Coral and pumpkin. These happen to be Melon Mambo and Rich Razz or yeah, Rich Razzleberry. So to use them, they're very simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to color a leaf, a petal on this. And I just took this and kind of go in swirls. And you don't have to press hard. And I'm just putting color down. And you don't even have to color the whole thing. But I am going to put color in the whole thing. Once I've got that, then I can come in with another color. And this is just a darker to make it a shade darker. So I'm going to do the same thing. Only I'm not going to color the whole thing. I'm just going to put some color where the shading might be on my petal. And I can go all around my leaf and do that. All the way around. So just coloring it around. And as you can see, I'm doing circles. And I lay down color for the whole thing. This is just this one technique. And then I'm going to take my rich razzleberry and go in where the shading might be. Doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm going to lift this up so I think you can see it better. Anyway, can you see that, how I shaded it? Looks great. Then you can do the same thing with, like, the, the stems. I might just come up and put color where it would be darker. So I've got that shaded in. And then I'm going to do this leaf, just so you can see. And again, with the circles. And you can see it, it doesn't have to be neat. Just scribble some color on. I'm not going to color this whole thing because, my gosh, you guys would be here all night. And you've probably got other things to see besides me coloring. So it's not anything fancy. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to add a liquid to it. But one of the things I was doing this weekend, because I only have the one green and I wanted to do a little bit shaded darker, I came in with just a little bit of gray. And you don't want to do too much gray, but a little bit of gray. Put this stem here just to give it a little bit darker tone. So it will pick up, I'll put some in here too. It will pick up the green and the gray together when I get it wet. Okay, so I'm just going to do that for now and just show you quickly with a blender pen. So a blender pen comes in a pack of three. You get three blender pens and they have brush ends on both ends. It's just a clear liquid in there, um, like a marker. Clear liquid. These are great because you can just take that. Um, image that you've colored and then just kind of swirl around the same with the pen. And if you want to take some of that color off, you just write on a piece of scratch paper, a full piece of scratch paper over here, and just blend that in together. You can see the difference of uh, this is one that's been blended and this is one that has not. They both look great. And again, you're just going to go ahead and just blend that color in. And color it in. And then you get the two-tone look of watercolor. And it's beautiful. Same thing with this leaf. Now I'm going to make sure that I have no more paint on my blender pen. And then I'm just going to come in and bring that shard, that gray, which is going to make my leaf just a little bit darker in that area. 
and then blend that all together. So you can see the one leaf that I did, the one side, how different it looks. Blended, as opposed to just colored. So it's not hard. Don't make this hard. Don't make your watercolor pencils hard at all, because they're not. Um, and I love the blender pens because they're not messy. And then this stem, where I put the crayon just down the one side of the stem, I'm just going to get that wet and kind of blend it to the edge. So it kind of makes its own shading. So it's really simple, really fast. Now let me show you a couple cards I did with it. This is one here. Same card. It's the same technique. I used the same colors. This is where I used the pumpkin and the... Actually, I used the pumpkin and the red on the orange flowers. I loved that technique. I love that look. And really, really simple. I might actually show you how I did that. So what I did with that is I just came in, again, just with the swirls. And I colored in the petal. And like I said, you don't have to color the whole thing, and you just certainly don't have to press hard. And then I came in and swirled in some red, like up that line, here where it would be darker, maybe up this line, and then in that corner. And again with the blender pen, just blending that in all the way around. And you get that beautiful orange look with the red. So just, yeah, colors that go together, it would be great. Then the background, you can see on the background here, I just took um, the, the Bermuda Bay and just kind of did the same thing. A little bit of swirls, not too much because it a little, a little of this blue goes a long way. So you can see where I just put right there in just that little corner there, and then I blended it out. Just kept blending it out. And you can add a little bit more, but that's how I got the look of the sky on this card. See the blue. Really simple. So I just cut these, chopped these up into little pieces. I think they're two by fours. And then layered them on a black piece that was a quarter of an inch, so four and a quarter by. I guess it's three by fours. So three and a quarter by four and a quarter. Attached it onto there. I tied a little baker's twine out and I stamped it with a with black ink on here. And then I cut one of our dragonflies. Super simple card. Super simple. I love this paper. You can do lots of stuff with it. Here's another, here's another sample. Same thing. I, I really just chopped this paper up into three by fours and then and then started coloring. But on this one, you can see, I don't know if you can see, but the dragonfly is um, the wings have like a cell on them. So they're kind of glittery. Just a really fun look. I did another sheet here, and I'm not really sure if you guys are going to be able to see it. Now, this one I didn't blend with the blender pen. I actually blended it with the Wink Estella. And so it, it worked. It blended it. It didn't. It, it looks it has a different look to it. I'll bring up that other one so you can kind of see. It has a totally different look to it. And that it's glittery. So real Fun way, just use what you have. Use a blender pen, use a Wink Estella. Um, let me show you the die cuts. So this is the stamp set that I use. This was one of my favorite bundles. One of my favorites, not my top favorite. <laughs> Dragon Dreams. It's a great stamp set. It's got lots of different pieces that layer together and make it great, great cards. And then you've got the dies that coordinate with it. And you could just use the die separately. You know, like this card, I just used the die. Doesn't I didn't use the stamps with it. But those are what the dies actually look like. And they, they, they do come in a bundle. Um, I have a few more samples here, and I have another technique. But I think what I'm going to do is sneak over and see what kind of questions we have. I might put a couple cards in the front. Can you hear my puppies barking? Just so you can see something pretty <laughs> while I move over here. Okay. Oh. Sorry. Okay. So there is my first card. 
what is my favorite celebration? In my, yeah, I'm gonna gonna show that to you. I am looking forward to a great stamping year. There's some fun stuff. There's something blocking. Really? Okay, I will, when I get back there, I hope you guys did, could you see what I was doing? Because my camera looked like you could see what you would, what I was doing. You are welcome. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Okay, I don't think I, the, those pencils look fabulous. How do you sharpen them? I just use a pencil sharpener. I actually have an old Stampin' Up! pencil sharpener that I'm going to use, and I also have an electric one. Um, and I'm not going to be afraid to use them. My last, I, yeah, they're, they're awesome. And I sharpened one the other day, and it didn't have, you know how sometimes when you sharpen them, they get crooked or they break off? I didn't have that problem, so. Yeah, it's fun to, Wink Estella is just another blending tool it's it's different it's not like the blender pen but then the aqua painter if you use aqua painter with them is not the same and that's the next demonstration i'm going to show is blending the paints with aqua painter so you're going to get a different look each time you do it so did i miss a question just join it in sorry Jan jana are you on tonight so in order to get free celebration, no. Okay, Jana has a great question. I don't know. I think Jana's on tonight, but she sent me in an email, and she asked, in order to order celebration, can you only order from the occasions? No, you can order anything that Stampin' Up has. So if there's something in the clearance rack or in the big catalog or the new occasions catalog, it's every fifty dollars. Any of the products that we have. So. Good question, Jana. I never think of that, and I know a lot of people worry about that. So I'm going to hang on to that question because I'm not sure if Jana's on tonight. And I want to make sure that she gets her answer. Good. I'm just checking to see, and it looks like my site is alive and well in Stamp Land. So people at my website. Good. Everybody's able to see me and hear me. Can you refresh a blender pen you've had for a while? Yeah, there is a, if you Google it, blender pen fluid, it, it will come up. Um, I know it has, I see, I can't even begin to tell you because I'm going to tell you wrong. Um, but it's probably something you can, it's a fluid you can pick up at the pharmacy. Oh, you can still see what I'm doing. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to switch back to my other camera. I'm going to do a quick, a quick aqua painter. Aqua painters and blender pens. Okay, so this piece, oh, this time I'm using shimmery white cardstock. Now, with blender pen or with the pencils, you can use shimmery white cardstock, you can use watercolor paper, you could use ultra smooth paper. All depends on what you're going to use and how much water you're going to put on this cardstock. Now, this is the shimmery white cardstock, and I don't think you can see it, but it really does shimmer. It's got a little coating on it. It's a little bit thicker than our Whisper White. Um, and I am going to take a couple colors. So I'm going to use the yellow, the Bermuda Bay. These colors I want. I'm going to use these colors. And I'm just going to scribble. Actually, I really am just going to scribble. So I'm going to take the um, Daffodil Delight and I'm going to scribble a line. And then come in with the old olive, and I'm going to scribble a line. And then the Bermuda Bay. Oh, I think I want to scribble this one a little bit higher. I'll probably chop it down anyway. But Bermuda Bay and Pacific Point. Once I've done that, then, oh, I forgot to grab a aqua painter for just a second. See, good thing I'm in my own stamp room. <laughs> so when I forget stuff. Yeah, there is something blocking that. Isn't that funny? There you go. 
was one of my lights. I'm glad I looked. Yeah, it was just, I have a light here that's, that was just blocking it. So aqua painters, aqua painters are great. These are, they get two in a pack. This is the big brush one. You get a big brush and a smaller brush. And what's nice about these is you can unscrew them and you can add liquid in there. I've got water in them. I have been known to add uh, rubbing alcohol sometimes, um, but I mostly use them with water. And what's nice about them is you get a, once you squeeze this, you get a continuous flow of ink or ink of water coming out of your brush. And I'll tell you a little story. The, one of the first times that I stamped was I was very young and I had very young little kids. And I was watercoloring my Christmas cards. And I, so I had them at the dining room table and with a glass of water and paint and I was there watercoloring. And of course I went as a young mother and did some stuff with my kids and I came back and my son had come running up and he hit the table and he knocked a glass of water over onto my beautiful watercolored <laughs> Christmas cards. And then that was the year that I knew I had to order the aqua painter because there is no mess. So all the water is contained. Okay, so once you've got that scribbled on there, you're just going to take your aqua painter and make sure that it's starting to, um, water starting to come out, and you just mix it. Going up. And if you're going to go back through that yellow, again with a piece of paper, to just color, and I'm just going to blend that up. And then I'm going to come back in and I'm going to blend up the blue. Specific point. Easy background. That is as simple as that card is, to, the background is to do. You've got the blending, you've got the watercolor look, and you've got that shimmer in there. And then when you add in a die cut, that's all I did on this was I just die cut the dragonflies. And on these, they're just die cut with Whisper White cardstock, and then I put Wicastella on them. So that's why they shimmer. You get that beautiful background. But just a fun way, I usually do my backgrounds on a big piece like this or even cut it this way and do it like this and then cut them down for my card or cut the size that you want down for your card. This one, again, I just did, uh, I'm sure it's three and a half by four and then, no, it's probably three by four and then three and a quarter by four and a quarter is the, is the layer piece. Simple, simple, simple. Make Stella makes that snazzy. Now I'm going to show you one that I did with the blues and the purples. And this one is Bermuda Bay, Pacific Point, Rich Razzleberry, and did I just use three colors? Oh, I did third. So I must have this one in there somewhere. Like that. There you go. Melon Mambo, Bermuda Bay, Pacific Point, Rich Razzleberry. Same card, different colors. This time I just did a black dragonfly, and you can see that shiny in the background is just, I just took my hand and did this with a couple layers of it. And then once I had it in like a mess, <laughs> I just added it onto my cardstock and then added adhesive onto my dragonflies and stuck it down and so that's the, the thread is behind the dragonflies but it really added a lot and I will tell you we I struggled I used these colors and I really felt like I had to use the one of these colors for that background but uh, my son's fiance Brittany pulled out some cardstock when I was in the other room and we decided that perfect plum looked really good with that anyway super easy card let me show you a couple more cards with that I have more here have to find them. I have quite a few more because I got a swap today too. So, okay, this was one. This is one I did. I copied it right out of our as a demonstrator. Stampin' Up sends us this fabulous little magazine with lots of different ideas in it for workshops and classes and samples. Anyway, I think I pulled this out of there. It was either out of there. Yeah, I think it was out of there. So this is using the the watercolor paper. So this is what I did, is I cut a dragonfly out of Whisper White, and then I layered it onto watercolor paper that I just added color behind where the wings would be, and then I took my aqua painter and just splashed it on there, added a couple of um, 
little embellishments. And the dragonfly right top is super easy. And I love the look of it, especially with that watercolor underneath. This one was another one. I think this is on the sample. I, this, I was looking at this sample on the front of the, of the catalog, and I liked it. But I wasn't going to do all those layers. So I just kind of took out some and just did a few. But this one is all embossed in copper. Copper is the big thing right now. I copper embossed a dragonfly. I cut a dragonfly out of vellum. It's that layer. I put some copper thread in there. And then one of those fancy embellishments on top. A couple of doilies that I kind of just bunched up a little bit. And then this is a background stamp in that, in this stamp, this one here. Does some great backgrounds. And I even copper embossed the inside. So copper's big this year. Lots of copper. And then today I got some samples. Let me show you quickly. Oh, this is one that I did using, I suppose I could have taken it out. Using that colored paper. I am going to take it out because I want to show you this is a super easy, easy part. <laughs> so I took that color paper and I chopped it up and then I just used that background stamp with the dots and stamped it down here and I stamped it up there and I layered it all and then I went Castella the dragonfly and added a ribbon and then I used that background, those dots as a background. Um, really super easy. I used mint macron, dapper denim, party. Easy, easy card. A couple of other, here's a B. I like this little embellishment that looks like a nut. Those are in the Caucasian's catalog. That little bee's adorable. And a Wicastella, of course. Dragonfly, this one is a dragonfly and she looks like she sponged the background and cut it out. And then sponged her cardstock back there. Really a lot of sponging work, that's beautiful. And then this one is the new um, beehive embossing folder. It's like that big thick one, the big knit um, that Teresa was asking about. These are thick, so you only use one of those clear plates. It's a great background with it. So, anyway, there is that card. Let me go back and see if we have questions. <laughs> this takes me a minute here. Sorry. Oh, not even a minute. Okay. Yeah, that copper embossed card, Karen, it is beautiful. It's beautiful. Where are the pencils in the catalog? I don't see them. I will show you. <clears throat> Sorry, I was going to do a little catalog tour, but I don't know if we have time today. I'll just show a few things. i got a few more things to show you. Um, do you know when they do change colors in the Stampin' Up! line, starting to buy ink refills when I buy pads because of that? Okay, so that's a good question, Lee. Um, Stampin' Up! has their ink colors. So there's always five colors that come new to our line every year and five colors that go out. And this year, I'm going to have to get a list. Anyway, the five, the, you want to make sure you get the refills for your ink colors for sure. Because we know that five are, are going to be gone. And I will tell you that people will start like March and April will start thinking about that. And you want to get your refills now while they still have them. Because eventually they do run out. Um, as far as the changing up their color line, they haven't done it for a few years. I don't suspect they'll do it this year. I, they'll come in with new five new ink colors. Um, so you should be able to get refills. But I always recommend to people, I gotta take a drink of water, sorry. I always recommend to people to, when you buy your ink pad, buy a refill to go with it so that you have it. Because you never know what could happen. Um, I hope that helps. Glad to see you said that about ordering. I was wondering the same thing. Thanks for the answer. I like my pencils to have sharp points on them when I color. Glycerin. That was the word. Thank you, Karen. Uh, glycerin is what is used for the blender pen. And I think you can pick that up like at a pharmacy. Um, I've never made the blender pen refill stuff, but I know that people have. And then they just set their ref. I don't know. I don't know how they do it. They might even pull out the, the end of the pen. The dragonfly is what I wanted to see. Oh, they're awesome. I love those dragonflies. Okay, Judy. Judy was just talking again about that light. I'm glad I figured out what was blocking the way there.
Rubbing alcohol does make things dry faster. Sometimes you can blend better with rubbing alcohol too. So if you're using rubbing alcohol with a reinker, um, it kind of is like if you've ever worked with an alcohol pen. You kind of get that look. It's different, but it does kind of work the same. Oh, that was a great question. Beth, Buffy didn't know either. I gotta get that information out. People, you can order from anything. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna check on my website. Do I prefer the blender pen over the aqua painter? Um, two different, totally different things. If I'm using an image like backgrounds, I like the aqua painter because it just puts water and it's real, you know, random. Um, but like those coloring sheets, I prefer the blender pen because I think the aqua painter would get them too wet and they would start to pill or bubble up. Um, it's not it's not a real thick cardstock. Um, on the shimmer paper, aqua painter works great. It really depends on what I'm doing and how big of an area I'm painting or coloring. So I use them both. But this weekend when I was playing with the watercolor pencils, I really found myself using the blender pen or the shimmer pen more so than the aqua painter. I'd use the aqua painter for backgrounds or for splattering. I like that, that for splattering. You know, another thing you can do is you can color with the wa watercolor pencils like onto a piece of paper or something next to you and make a little palette. And then you can pick up paint from that palette, get it wet with a blender pen or with um, the aqua painter, and then bring it to your project. A lot of people just do a little outline along your project, a little thin outline, and then blend it out a little bit. And it's beautiful. It's just, it's, they're really fun. Don't make them harder than, than they have to be because they're not hard. None of this is hard. Um, and you will just, just have fun playing with it. Okay, Lisa asked, I was so excited to see the dragonflies. I stamp color and sketch them all the time. My favorite, definitely in my order. Oh, well, awesome. That was easy. Oh, L Lorraine just said the watercolor pencils are on page 24 of the Occasions Mini Catalog. Thank you. Can I add water directly to the pencil and color? Yes, you can also pick up, uh oh, did I freeze? You can also pick up color, like pretend, <laughs> pretend this is an aqua painter and this is a pencil, you can pick up color or out of blender pen and then color with it that way too. J gives you a lot more control. So there's lots of different things you can do with them. Lots of people are telling us about the pens being on page 24, cool. Okay, I have um, asked questions if you have them. I do have some more to show you. I'm not sure what I have to demonstrate, but um, I have lots of other things to show you. Oh, I know. Let's see, we'll start with this over there. I have lots to show. Okay, so I wanted to show these because they came today and they're for Valentine's Day. And they're even still in plastic envelopes, but I'm going to show them anyway because they are so pretty. This was a swap that I was in. This is using that new Valentine set in their Occasions Mini Catalog. I think this one's beautiful. Um, it's really just real pretty. I love blue and or the pool party and the red together. There's some of that great over red glitter paper. So there's just some of Valentine's that I got today. I wanted to show those off. I wanted to show the balloons. Although I'm not showing the balloons tonight, I made some projects with them. And you'll actually probably recognize the projects. One of the things I love about the catalog is, I'm gonna just do a little quick peek here is the samples. I think the samples are beautiful and I don't think they're as hard as, as we want to make them. But if you turn to page, I love this stuff. <laughs> okay, so oh, I guess it wasn't in this. Oh, I know what it was, it was in here, sorry. It was in the celebration catalog. Anyway, I love the samples. So this was, this, these samples, I just thought, I thought this paper was beautiful. So when I was sitting around this after, this weekend, I thought, hey, I'm going to play with the balloon set. 
So these are just the framelits. I just wanted to show you quickly. These are the framelits that come with the balloon. There's 15 pieces in there. That's a lot. Comes with a set that matches it. It looks like this. Called Lift Me Up, and they come as a bundle, and you can get them cheaper. But I just think that the the thinlets alone are gorgeous. Then you add in your stamp set, it even makes it prettier. But I wanted to show how these worked because if you looked at these thinlets, you'd be like, interesting. They don't show off as well until you do them on colored paper. And then, look at, isn't that just beautiful? And inside my thinlet I have, I cut out another one. Okay, so these are, you get, you get the three balloons, you get four clouds, you get a heart. This is a little frame that goes with like this stamp and this stamp. There's the heart. And there's the cloud, right? And then, and here's the basket. And when you put the, this basket and this cloud together, you get a cupcake. And there's actually a stamp. So there's the basket. And there's the cupcake top. So you can make little cupcakes with that. I just thought that was so cute. Now this piece here, are these pieces. It's like here, 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 and here. And you cut them out with different colored paper or the same paper. It doesn't matter. It makes a fun looking balloon that way. But when you layer this over the top of that, see what you get? It coordinates with those stripes. How cool is that? This Stampin' Up! really put some effort and design into, into these new thinlets because they do so much. Um, and then having the little cupcake just is the topping. There's also a stamp set in here. I'll show it to you. This carousel one here. So these cupcakes here. See those cute cupcakes in the carousel? They coordinate with those great ones. So you could actually stamp in the layer, and you'll see how they're shaded gray. That means that they have a framelit that, or a thinlet that goes with them. And that's this one. So they really bundled stuff together. But I just loved when they when I did that. This and it was just. Just to show you the different dyes that are in there, it turned out beautiful just because of the colors I used. Anyway, so when I was looking at the celebration catalog and I saw this paper, and I love this paper, and I love these samples, so I sat down this weekend with my sister. She was stamping and I was stamping, and I made that card. This card here is this card here, and it is really pretty. And it even has some rhinestones on there just for a little pick me up. And then this card here, it was actually a longer card. I just made it a regular size card. I just squashed it down. And same thing, and I added a little embellishment in there. And I did another, oh, I did the box. Hello. So this is the box. I was going to go to the store today and get candy, but it was too cold out. And so I cut one, two, let's one, two, three, or five dies, and then glued them together. And then Added a little cloud onto one of our little boxes, and this is just a, a strip, one inch strip all the way around just to decorate it. And a dimensional holds it on top of there, but that will actually stand up. And that's that box right there. So really use your catalog for ideas. I didn't make this one. I had planned to make this one, but I didn't. But I do have a couple of other samples. Here's one. This one I think is in one of the catalogs, or it might have been in our little magazine. Same papers. I love those papers. And then today in my mail, I got this one, which is that same paper and those balloons. These are all die cut. They're beautiful. And then this one, I really think this one's beautiful and how simple. It's just got a background that's stamped. I think you can see it real lightly. And then those are hearts. So there's hearts in the clouds. And then the balloon. And then some clouds. Super simple, easy card. I like that set. That was fun. Okay, see if you have any more questions, and then I got one more group of things to show you. Whoops. Sorry. I think I'm getting better at transferring my stuff. I did want to show you. Somebody had asked what my favorites were. 
So I'm going to go here. These are the bundles. These are all the bundles that are in the Occasions mini catalog. There are lots of them. And like I said, like that balloon one, even though it coordinates with the Lift Me Up stamp set, it also coordinates with the carousels. So you want to look at that. Um, but one of the things I really found with a lot of these dies is some of them would just be awesome on their own. Okay, this was my absolute favorite, absolute favorite suite of the whole catalog was the Cool Treat Suite. I think that, it, I don't know what it is, but it it's the colors, it's the stamps, they're beautiful, but wait till you see the projects I made today. Uh, how does the shimmer cardstock compare to whisper white cardstock and the heavy cardstock as far as weight? Okay, so Janine asked about the shimmer cardstock compared to the whisper white cardstock compared to our thick whisper white cardstock. Our whisper white cardstock is a little bit thinner, and then shimmery white cardstock is right next as weight wise a little bit a little bit heavier than our regular cardstock and then the thick cardstock is really heavy heavier does that make sense janine janine hope i'm pronouncing that right where did you get the wood gain background when you were showing your samples that is a piece of um it's like wrapping paper the wood grain background i have is just wrapping paper it's wrapped around uh i think it's wrapped around a cutting board or something so I just did that because I was trying to keep things looking clean. Okay. I don't see questions. I hope you guys... Okay. I hope that uh, questions are being answered over there on, on YouTube. Diana, Lisa asked, do you think vellum would work well with the balloons similar to the dragonfly sample? Yes. I really do. I think that you're just going to get a different look with the vellum, but it's it's it'll be beautiful. It will be beautiful. Yeah, the shimmery white cardstock is not completely white. It looks it's a little bit off color, off white. It's not vanilla. Um, it does kind of look odd when it's added to a white base, but if you have a mat around it, it looks fine. Uh, if you want to see a list of the bundles, I can show them to you on the internet in the store where they are listed. After seeing all your... I'm seeing lots of things I'm going to need now. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens. <laughs> Okay, so I think I got questions answered. Okay, I got to show you a couple things because I'm going to do, I'm trying to decide on these next samples that I did today. Um, it was a, it was samples that Stampin' Up! had given us directions for, but they're really confusing directions. And anyway, so I spent some time today to make them. And I'm deciding if I should do a class or just do some videos or what. So, uh, But I have to show them to you because they're so stinking cute. Okay, so yeah, this piece here, somebody asked what that was. It's just a piece of, it's just a piece of gift wrap and I have it on to a self-adhesive or self-cutting mat or is that what it's called? Yeah. So, okay, anyway, my favorite sound. Look at this. And you open it up and this is gonna have a gift card on this side. Cute. You don't even have to tell me that you think they're cute because I already do. And then it has a coordinated envelope. Cute. This one is a little four by four card. Look at that spoon in the silver foil paper. Cute. And then the matching envelope. Oh, on this one too, I have to show you. It's, it's kind of cool. So these, those little jewels there. Those are actually, let me show you, because they're awesome. They're called sprinkles. Embellishments, when you open them up, they are literally look like sprinkles. Lots of sparkle. There's, oops. Yeah, I get them all over. But I used them quite a bit on this. I saw somebody took, I want to find that sample, but somebody took 
a little cupcake. So they put the cupcake in that, and then they added these as the cupcake top, like several sprinkles. It was the cutest thing you ever saw. I remember where I saw it. I saw it in person, so it must be uh, in my room somewhere. Eventually it will show up. Okay, power up number three. Cute. This is this is the that paper in my favorite set, and you can see how it's shiny. This is one of our specialty papers, and so this has an embossed image on it. And what I did up here is I just sponged blue um, pool party ink. I sponged a little blue on there just to give it some texture or design. But you can see the embossing. And then look at these little strawberries. They actually are stamped and then cut out, and they actually have little holes in them. You see that? Very detailed. This, this, I think that's, is that laying around here? Yeah. I don't even have them all on here yet. This is, this is just dangerous because they're just laying here. But, like, this is a little strawberry. You can barely see it. Um, and there's sprinkles, and there's the cherry. Anyway, lots of little pieces. I'm going to keep those together before I lose one of them. This is the stamp set. So it's got lots of different bits and pieces. So I'm going to do a video to show you how to do these because they're not, none of these cards are hard, but they're sure beautiful. This one uses the ice cream cone, the popsicle, the strawberry, and then lots of the different sprinkles on there, and then some white boxes. It's really simple. Oh, I forgot to show the envelope. So this is this is the envelope for this one. This is the envelope for this one. Oh, I have to show you another thing too. This one goes for this one. So this will be a class. I have the instructions for it. Very difficult. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'll do up some videos or I will just run another class just on this and walk you through some tips that I learned. But if you look closely at this one, let's see that in there, but the waffle, the cone has texture waffle in it. So it cuts it and it texturizes it. Cute. Favorite thing right there. And I can't wait to do those other samples. So I will probably just do samples that are right in the catalog. And then some other stuff for fun. So yeah, so I was kind of thinking maybe I would do another class just on the ice cream set. Um, either next Thursday or next Saturday. I don't know which date, the 12th or the 14th. I will have to figure it out. I will let you know if you sign up for my newsletter, you'll get you'll get a message for that, and um, I will make sure that um, it's taped so that you can watch it if you can't make it on Thursday night or Saturday morning. I usually like to do them Thursday night or Saturday morning, so I'll let you know how it all works out and when I do it. If anybody has any questions, now would be the time to ask them. I do. I absolutely love that ice cream set. I just think that it's really cute. Oh, let me see if I got a question here. Oh, yeah, sponging on the embossed paper. Yeah, right? Easy, fun, simple. Um, sometimes I think we make it too hard. Whoops. Yeah, so anyway, there. that's my favorite. And tomorrow, I'm hoping tomorrow, if I have some time, I'm going to make all of those cards. Um, because I just think they're so cute. They're a little more than what I normally do, but it's not hard. It's just finding the time to do it. Okay. Hostess code. So for those of you that know, I do a hostess code on these nights, and anybody that places an order using that hostess code, between now and Sunday, January 8th, um, I will send you off a fun little package of goodies from the spring mini catalog, so it'll be something new. Um... Usually it's um, embellishments, paper, cardstock. It's uh, a combination of several items that are in that suite. Um, if your order is over $150, please do not use the hostess code. Take those hostess benefits for yourself, and I will still send you the packet of goodies. Um, but, you know, if your order is over $150 right now, you'll get, not only will you get the $15 in hostess rewards, but you'll get three Stampin' Up! or three celebration items, which is huge. That's a lot. Um, also, remember, it's a great time to become a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Best decision I ever made. Uh, it is $99. You get to choose $125 worth of product, plus 
pick two free stamp sets of your choice. I think they say it's like a value up to $104 or something. So that's a pretty good deal. Uh, we are doing the door prize drawing tonight. So if you are on Facebook, you'll find a link to click on to sign up for the door prize. Click on that link. Fill in the door prize. If you are on my website, down below the video screen, there should be a thing that says door prize that you can click on, and that will take you right to the thing that you fill in. And if you're on YouTube, it's down in the description um, below the video. So we got a great door prize tonight. I love giving away free stuff. I'm going to come back. Oh, the door prize looks like this. That's the form that you should get. So what happens is it populates into a uh, spreadsheet on Google. Everybody's populates it into the spreadsheet. All the information goes in there. I pick a number before the workshop starts. I pick a number, and I have picked that number. The number is 76 is the number tonight. Whose name falls on 76 in that spreadsheet. That's who wins, and tonight they win. The thank you so very much stamp set. It's a wooden one from Stampin' Up! It's a celebration stamp set. So no, you probably not many of you have this. So whoever gets chosen tonight gets this free free uh, stamp set. So oh, I should have gave away my cards too. Oh, we have to have a few more giveaways. Now we're gonna work your heads. Because now I'm gonna ask your questions. Let me think. Let me think. Let me go grab some cards that I made. Okay, we're going to do the watercolor cards, and <laughs> I'm looking for something, but I don't see it. Okay. I'm going to be asking questions, and you guys, whoever answers first, will get sent the card. If you have a question, now would be the time to ask it. Karen, you are welcome. I love Sharon. Cool. Yeah, you're really going to have to study the catalogs because there's a lot of stuff in there. Okay, I think our questions are done. So, oh, I almost hit the wrong button. I almost hit stop broadcast. Okay, question. My first question, and the first person to answer it on all three places, YouTube, Facebook, my website, will each get a card. My question is, these are the cards I'm giving away. We get one of these. So you get one of these. It'll be a surprise which one you get. How many watercolor pencils are there in the pack? First person to answer gets the, I'm looking it up, <laughs> gets the card. So I'll be watching those areas, and I'm also going to be watching, I'll go to, go here, there. Oh, interesting. First person that answers gets those. I'm going to swing over and check the door prize form and see who won the door prize. Winner is... Judy Parker, Judy Parker, uh, barely, barely at gmail.com. You are the winner of the stamp set that I'm giving away, this thank you stamp set. So send me, Judy, you'll need to send me your address either in uh, email at diane at ddstamps.com or a message on Facebook. Um, send me your address, and I will get that sent out to you. Congratulations, Judy. And I'm going to swing around and let's see who won. Oh, boy. First winner. Soul Sister 94 on YouTube. Soul Sister 94. You will need to send me your name and your address. And again, it's Diane at ddstamps.com or on Facebook, Diane Dimich or DD Stamps, either one. You are the winner on YouTube. 
And the winner. Gotta go way to the first one. Annie Jasper. You won the second card on Facebook. Congratulations. And let's see if anybody won on my face on my Ooh, got a whole bunch. Wanda Bailey on my website. You win the third card. So send me your address. Diane at ddstamps.com is my email. You can also get a hold of me at www.ddstamps.com. Send me a message that way. But I need your address to get these sent out. So thank you. And is there any more questions? I better check it out one more time. Yeah, who knew there were 13 pencils, huh? I think it's funny that there were 13. I don't know why, I just find that funny. I don't see any more questions. So we are going to call it a night. Thank you all for um, coming tonight. I hope you had fun. I will be back online next Thursday or next Saturday. I haven't looked at my schedule, so I didn't really want to make a plan tonight and actually announce it and then have to change it. Um, but I'm going to do, and it will be those, those four cards. I will have everything cut, measurements, directions, everything for you. There are a few tips I want to show you that I learned while putting them together. Um, but I, it'll be fun. So I hope that you can join me. and. Uh, if you, oh, I was going to show, I know, somebody asked me about the, see, this is what happens. I forget what I'm doing. We have to go back to the store. Okay, so the Stampin' Up! store. Just so you know, if you click on store, it takes you right into the store. These are the Occasions 2017 items that are in there. If you want to know what the bundles are, go to Occasions Bundles, and it lists all the bundles for that catalog. Really look close, because I think the bundles kind of got buried. I don't know why. If there's just so much stuff in there, but I will post the bundles up on my website, too, um, before the end of the week, just so you know. There's the clearance rack, which has some stuff left over. I know somebody last night was looking for bombs away. It's available and ready to be ordered. And last but not me, we need to look up the stamp. One, three, eight, two, five, six. Boom. There you go. Uh, I don't know who was looking for it, but it is available. Um, is it French? Yes. So there's that stamp that you were looking for, whoever it was. I feel bad because I didn't write your name down. Yes, items on clearance can go towards your purchase. You bet. Anything that you have. Can you explain again why not to use the hostess code if you buy over $150? If you're purchasing over $150 with a product, don't use the hostess code because you will get $15 in stamp and rewards plus the three celebration items. The $15 in stamp and rewards I want you to have because it's free product, and I will still send you um, my goodie packet that I send out. So you'll still get that, plus you'll get the $15 in free. That's why you should not use the hostess code. Does that make sense, Sandia? Oh, she wanted to know if there was a punch that went, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, let me get back to the screen. I believe, yes. There's a punch that goes to this right here. This is a scallop punch. I don't know if we have that anymore. Let's go to the punches and look. <laughs> There's the punch. The flower medallion coordinates with that, with that stamp set. See, there it is punched out right there. I don't think we have the scallop punch anymore, but let me look. No. So thank you for remembering what it was she asked. I truly appreciate that. 
Uh, thanks, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something. I hope I answered your questions. If I didn't, I'm going to stick around online here for a few more minutes just to uh, just to check things out. Um, is there a bundle price? No, not for that stamp set and that punch. There is not a bundle price for that um, because it's an old one. So, any more questions out there that I missed? I told you about, yeah. Uh, do you think there will be more pencils? I don't know. You know, I think they gave us a good selection of pencils. I think they gave us a good select variety of colors. We have black and gray and white, which will change any of those colors to be lighter or darker. So I'm not sure if we'll get new, more pencils. Um, I'm just that thrilled that we got them at this point. So I guess we'll wait and see. Cool. Okay, if nobody else has any more questions, I'm out. It's time. This Winkastella is that glittery glue. Winkastella is a pen. Um, it comes in clear and it comes in gold. And it's just, a, it's like an aqua painter with glitter in it. Glimmer in it. Glimmer. It's not really glitter. It's glimmery. Okay? Cool. Thanks. Don't forget to place your order by Sunday night to get that goodie packet. Uh, I'll be getting that ordered and sent out as soon as they come next week. And I will let you know when I do my next class, whether it would be Thursday or whether it would be Saturday of next week. There's so much to show that I just think, oh, what the heck, let's do another class. So have a great night. Thanks for all for coming. And I will speak to you soon. Bye.